I don't know about you guys, but I always loved swords. Like, I don't care if it was a show, I don't care if it was a movie, cartoons, video games, you know, Soul Calibur Nightmare, or Raphael, wielding the sword. I love swords, man. It was like, it was like I could totally see myself becoming a warrior one day. I don't think there's anyone, any young guy who doesn't like swords. Like, you gotta be a certain type of guy to not like swords. You know what I mean? So, uh, and I believe, like, it's a powerful figure, a wielder of a sword. Think about that, man. What is a sword? If we're looking at archetypes, you know, it's kind of fun to dive into stories and figure out what they mean. What is, what does the sword represent? Some people think the sword represents truth. You just cut it away. You know, you cut out, you use your sword of truth or your light so saber to defeat the darkness and to shine the light for the way. Uh, the way that I like to entertain this is when you find your sword, you find, you find the thing that helps you complete your mission. You find the thing that helps you that gives you mission. It gives you purpose. When I was younger, I watched one of my favorite videos of all time. It was, I think, uh, the the Sorcerer and the Stone. And it was about the chronicles of King Arthur starting at a young boy. And his name was Wart at the time. And if I remember this correctly, there was a sword that was stuck in a stone. And it was said that whoever could pull the sword from the stone, they would become a king. And so you had all of these people from all over the world come and try to pull this sword out of the stone. No one could do it. The strongest of people were not able to even budge the sword. And then one day this little boy, Wart, lowly, stature, weak, young, comes and pulls it out. And he's made king. And what that signifies to me is that he found his sword, he found his purpose. Every warrior that wields a sword, the sword becomes an extension of you. The sword represents purpose in your life, something that you wield. And what happens when you wield a sword? Well, you got to get better. You cannot just stay, you know, you can't just wield the sword once and think, hey, I'm going to defeat enemies. I'm going to move on to one day kill the massive dragon that's terrorizing my family, my land, and it's ruining everything. In order to be a good warrior, you have to practice your sword. And you cannot, you cannot get lazy with that. You cannot get sidetracked. You cannot be, you know, someone that's just like, ah, I don't feel like using my sword today. I don't feel like training for about a, you know, a month. No, dude, wielding the sword, it's all you got. It's the main thing. It's the mission. It's your purpose. And so... If you're, if you know, if you're a low starting character, you haven't even found your sword yet. That's okay. That'll come. Sometimes it's just by experimenting. Okay, trying, prodding, poking the box, finding new things. We've talked about this. And from there, what I've realized is that once you find your sword, then you have to be careful to make sure that you're constantly using it and you're constantly training and you're becoming the best warrior that you can be and you're you're going out in, into the world and maybe you're learning how to new, use new weapons. You're learning the damn nunchucks or the bow staff. Okay, sometimes it's time to move on from just the sword and upgrade. Sometimes just to upgrade your sword. Your purpose expands though once you find, once you pull it out of the stone, now you're sort of obliged you're obligated to go and become a master of sword, of the sword. So, man, I think the world we live in today is not a world that encourages men to pick up the sword, to pick up their cross, to, to carry a, a burden. And uh, it, it doesn't really, you don't need to anymore. You don't have to be a warrior. Because what do we live in? We live in very good times. And good times create weak men. Hard times create strong men. And strong men create 
good times, which in turn, the cycle just keeps going. And so right now we're in pretty good times. You don't need to have a bigger purpose. You can not take responsibility for a lot of the stuff you're doing. You don't have to have any reason to be alive, man. You don't have to believe in anything greater than yourself, which for me, I think is, is a, to the downfall of modern man to not actually have any belief in anything. It seems like in the early 2000s, maybe it's been going on earlier, but with the boom of the internet, atheism became something that so many young guys seem to attach themselves to. It's like a, a prideful status thing of like, hey man, anyone who's, if, if you're an atheist, look, it's because you see the bigger picture, you realize that God's just a fairy tale. And that is a, a terrible thing because it's, it stops there. It's hard, man. Like being an atheist is hard. Not believing in anything, nothing, just sit on a rock. Now I've been there, man. Okay. I've been there. I've seen the void. I've, I've once, I almost used atheism as a way to give my life purpose. I, I wielded this dark sword that just it was a void. It was a black sword. It consumed any bit of light. Any bit of hope would be sucked in by the sword. And I was, it was always out, man. It was like, it was, it was not a good sword to be wielding. It was the wrong one. Okay. And I realized like atheism is such a, a coping mechanism for, for a young mind. It, you can either grab onto it, you accept it, you think, you know, it kind of gives you a status, something to actually believe in. I mean, hold on to because we're trying to make sense of this thing. And what I realized is that it's deceptive because any religion, man, or any of these like beliefs, it's not a, it's not a fairy tale. It's something that people use to, to give their life meaning. Like back in the day, religion, literature, art, philosophy, all of these things were their original applications. You know how you have your, on your phone, like, Hey man, I'm going to download this calorie counter. I'm gonna keep it right here. I got Tinder applications to meeting women, applications to losing weight, religion, literature, art, philosophy were the original applications to create meaning in life. And they actually stood the test of time. Now, just because a couple people took religion too seriously and, and believed every fucking single thing in the book, it's like those people, okay, fine. But you know, you got to realize it's not about just a fairy tale. And then you're like, Oh, it's a fairy tale. I'm gonna stop believing it. The, the purpose of religion, the stories gave your life a sense of meaning. To even think that there were gods that, that were like watching over you or that could be honored. Like that's huge, man. That's huge. The Greeks used to paint or had these sculptures of gods and believe that they were destined. I told you the word, I believe it is a nair, A-N-A-I-R or something like that people believe that they were possessed by a God. Alexander the Great, when he would ride into battle, he had been told by an oracle that there's a God inside of you. You cannot be harmed. Okay, yeah, that sounds a little bit crazy. Imagine riding into battle or going about your day believing that you're out to do God's work, that you have a God inside of you and no harm can come your way. Imagine that. And he did amazing things. He lived a very prolific life. So they were the original application. So this side, you know, this whole little side thing I'm going on is, is just to realize that stories have immense power. Metaphor has immense power in your life. And, uh, maybe we've been deceived by the world that we live in. That is, that doesn't acknowledge that these things are very important and that tries to water them down to just little fairy tales and uh, what crazy people believe in. Okay. And so if you are atheist, man, like you can find hope in something else, but even just to entertain, I would, I would try to entertain stories like read Homer, 
or read some good, some read about the gods, learn stories of Hercules and I don't know, just various gods and, and watch Spartacus or something, you know, honor the gods, man. It's like having, having complete darkness is not a good sword to be wielding. Okay. There is a greater purpose to live. And so once you find your sword, well then you've got to become a wielder. You've got to become the best you can be. Use your life to master the sword. There's this really cool book that I'm reading right now, The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. And the book is really cool because it starts the kid out at such a lowly level. Like he's just a little peasant boy. And then he discovers the sword. And he's got to get ready for a competition. But the competition is with people that have been training the sword for all of their life. All of their life. So he doesn't stand a chance. And he's pretty damn good. Okay? So what he decides to do. In order to get really good at the sword, he has to train extra, extra hard. But there's only so much time in a day. So there's this, there's this world, this sort of uh, world that you can enter. And there's demons in this world. Okay? It's sort of like a dream world. So what he ends up doing is practicing fighting these demons. He goes overtime, dude. He starts fighting these demons. But when he's fighting the demons in this world, if they kill you, you feel everything. If they rip your arm off, if they bite out your damn artery, you know, they'll, they'll, you feel everything and then you just wake up. It's sort of like the Matrix, you know, training in the Matrix. Um, so he trains in this world. Every breath in this world is like, it's slowed down, Okay. You take one breath in the real world, it's 50 breaths in this world. So he becomes elite. He becomes a great trainer. Um, the more of the story is, you gotta train. He found his purpose. Now you gotta use it. And what I find is that there's so many ways that we just decide to not even train for the day. We give up our sword practice. We literally are losing our willpower because our willpower is being sapped in so many different ways. Our new swords are like phones and we keep them in our pocket and the phone, man, it's like you only have so much energy in a day. You got to figure out once you find your sword, make time for practice or you're going to waste so much time. Nothing is important. If you want your life to progress, if you want to reach the, if you want to go to the next step, if you want to meet the next mentor, if you want to, you know, make more money, if you got to go to the new job, like you've got to figure out a way to avoid all of the draining, all of this, the energy sapping activities that are in the world. Stuff like multitasking, sitting there, listening to music, watching random videos, trying to do two things at once. Eating shitty food is a huge step on your energy. Once you eat sugar, I notice it releases like your dopamine big time. And then it's like, it's easier to binge. It's, it drains your willpower, man. Willpower is a real thing. People think if there's a will, there's a way. Dude, your willpower gets drained throughout the day and then it's done, okay? If you start out by practicing the sword earlier in the morning, it's going to be way better than going to like five o'clock and then be like, Hmm, maybe now I should practice my sword swordsmanship. You're just not going to do it. You're going to find some other stupid activity to do anything that sort of works the brain mental. Like uh, it, it takes you sapping energy. Okay. It, it distresses your brain like video games, even playing chess, like early on, it's a mental, it's like mentally draining. You're using your willpower up. All your willpower should be devoted in your life to fulfilling your purpose, to becoming the best swordsman that you can, to, uh, to growing that, whatever that is, to eventually becoming a single swordsman, growing and then growing your army, expanding your numbers, making other swordsmen, getting people, you know, it's like, dude, we're so distracted. No one's, it, it's, and that's another thing. It's easy to be great these days if you just avoid the temptations get rid of the damn distractions dude get rid of everything draining your willpower and put the pro and prioritize things put them first make them go first okay stop avoid stop you know i know that some of you guys know what to do in your life and then you're like oh i fall into the bad habits i get distracted 
No shit, man. Be fucking diligent about what is distracting your life and then weed it out. Anything that we do in life is like a little plant and it starts to grow and we just water it. That's another thing people want to get so impatient these days. They're like, where's my, where's my results? Where's my success? Dude, anything you start is like a little plant seed that you're planting. You plant the seed. What do you do? You water it. Look at all the trees around you. How long did they take? It took years and years to become a big, mighty oak tree. Same thing with you. You cannot get impatient. You cannot start, stop watering the seed. You cannot let weeds come up and just, you know, gnash at your seed and just rip it apart. Nothing will happen. So you're going to be ruthless with the weeds. And more than ever, you know, we, we just, we like, okay, I'm going to stop this and that. No, dude, be ruthless with the weeds, man. Get them out of there. And the phone, huge distraction, highly. I don't think we understand how much actual mental energy it saps from us, okay? How much mental energy we're draining with the media. And the best thing to do, get rid of the TV. I have no TV in this house. I don't even have a computer in this house. I keep it in my office. I've delegated a place, uh, dedicated a place to go to, to use it or else I know that I'm going to play games. Like I know myself. So you got to set up boundaries, man. Like Odysseus did. That's one of the ways you got to set up boundaries. Okay? And be ruthless, man. Uh, that's really all I got to say. I, you cannot, once you find your sword, once you find your mission, your purpose, go for it. Make it a top priority. Because the world we live in is going to try to suck hope from you. And it's going to put plenty of obstacles in your way. That you must overcome. You must be a master of. Discard quickly. Take what is useful. Discard what is not. That's a mental framework to live by. A maximum to live by. Take what is useful. Discard what is not. Okay? And make it your number one thing. I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.